Good afternoon. I'm Mayor Darrell Seymour. Today here in the studio, I have our guests here, Chad Housley from the Shola School District and Laura Singleton from White Mountain Independent. What we'd like to do today is just give you a little bit of update of where we're at uh, currently with the COVID-19. Last night, the city of Shola declared an emergency. Uh, it was not to change the status necessarily, nor are we saying that we are in any type of emergency situation. It is just strictly to allow funding to come from different levels since the state of Arizona, Governor Ducey declared the state as a state of emergency. It's just the next step that we do so that if we take precautions and need to close any buildings, uh, we have the authority to do so. And so what we want to do is just answer some questions. There's a lot of questions out there from the public. It comes uh, minute by minute, hour by hour, it changes. Uh, I just got off the phone with a call from the White House where we had about 450 participants on the phone call. I've been on the phone call this morning or a meeting with the County Health Department. Uh, so there's a lot of things that, that happen, but most of all, I just want to thank uh, the citizens of the White Mountains, particularly the citizens of the city of Sholo, uh, because that's uh, where I basically, you know, jurisdiction over. But we have worked with uh, the other uh, mayors and other supervisors as well here in the county. So I just want to share a couple of things with you. I'm going to ask uh, Laura to share some questions that she may have, as well as uh, Supervisor, uh, Superintendent, sorry, Housley, to be able to share some of the things that are happening at the school. So. I just want to say that the President of the United States has asked us to do a 15 days to slow spread. And if we can work together with this, we'll be able to curve the outbreak of this virus. Uh, currently in Navajo County, we only have two confirmed cases. There are no confirmed cases in the city of Sholo, but that does not mean that there could be a carrier or something that is potentially spreading. So we are taking extra precautions, but these are some of from the great health officials that we've had throughout the United States that have chosen to take this method. And as your city leader, we have chosen to also follow this method. So uh, I wanted to share, Judge, share with us a little bit. I know the school was at spring break and that was a good time for some of this to happen. The kids are expecting to come back, but the schools are gonna be closed at least until the 27th. But you guys have already taken some measures to help with uh, the needs there of getting meals and things into the school. You wanna share with what you've done? Yeah, prior to, to break, we began to discuss some of the, the questions surrounding COVID-19 and try to you know, implement our emergency plan. Part of that emergency plan, as you mentioned, was how do we keep continuum of services available? In particular, how do we, how do we keep food available to those, those students that are now um, going to be at home for, uh, at, at this moment, for an additional week, but it could, could extend longer? Um, after approval from the federal uh, government and state officials, we've been able to implement similar to what we do during our summer summer foods program. And so all all children ages one to 18 are, are given a, a free lunch. Um, uh, for instance, today it was a hot sandwich and some French fries and some other other components there that meet the guidelines of the, the school lunch program. And then they were also given a, a breakfast that they could take with them and, and eat in the morning. This is available to all, uh, anybody ages one to 18. Um, throughout any community, they could come and pick those up and we'll be doing that Monday through Fridays. I think it's great that you guys are prepared and, and put measures in to be able to assist that because a lot of times that's where people rely on some of the basic uh, nutrition that they have coming in. We are also um, we're also beginning on Monday. We'll we'll launch um, what we call bus route services, and we'll we'll be um, taking the meals with us along what would be a normal bus route, and we'll we'll push out where those routes are in particular. But uh, students could go um, with their parents to that pickup or drop off point, and and. Uh, and get a, a lunch and a breakfast in our more remote areas because we're really long and uh, 
uh, mostly remote. That's great. I think one of the things to remember as they congregate or, or going to that route to, to keep your social distancing during that time, they'll be able to deliver those to you by hand in person, but also just uh, bring as few of people as possible from your family if only one member or a child can be there and they can pick up lunches for however many students possibly that are there. Part of the guidelines, uh, that, that's important to know, but part of the guidelines <coughs> is the children that are having the lunch have to be there with at okay. least one of their parents. So, so uh, the children would have to have to be accompanied by a parent and uh, those who are receiving the lunch should be, okay. should be there. Should be there. Appreciate that. Uh, some of the things are just some questions. Laura, I'm going to take a question from you right now mm -hmm. of what are some of the questions you've heard or, or what can we help uh, answer that maybe the public has? has have a question that you'd like to Sure, um, thank you, Mayor. So one of the things that um, that occurred last night, of course, in the council meeting is the proclamation. And um, so one of the questions folks have, there's a lot of, uh, you know, words like emergency and declaration and proclamation. What does that mean for residents? Can you talk a little bit about how how you govern under this sort of proclamation? What it does, it brings and just unifies everything where the president has his uh, proclamation that closes how broad he has to get approval. The governor, it broadens, uh, it lessens how far he has to reach out to make a decision. And so as a mayor, it doesn't take an entire council to make mm -hmm. a decision. And so we're able to make certain decisions like impose a curfew, order the closing of a particular business or any business, uh, close uh, public buildings. So that's something that gives us the authority, you know, as a mayor to be able to make some of those decisions. I wouldn't do any of those decisions without consulting, and but it puts those measures into place where we can move quickly in the event that we need to. Sure. Okay, thank you for that. And so the funding is key, as well as um, consulting with the council. And so there's already been some buildings and facilities that have been closed, like the gym and the senior center and the aquatic center. And so um, can you talk about businesses? Is there anything that, that the city's recommending close or change how they're doing business? We haven't recommended any change to the way that businesses are operating. You'll see that some of the franchise companies have uh, authorized and made suggestive changes that they are doing. Uh, they're perhaps on some of the restaurants closing some of their dining areas. Other restaurants are maybe implementing uh, more space between people there and many of the businesses of uh, restaurants particularly have looked at going to take out and you know delivery food so yeah, as part of remaining and trying to keep uh, within groups smaller than 10 it's important that we haven't required it of them but what's one of the great things is a lot of people just self-impose and self-comply sure. and that's one of the things that we appreciate. And they're adapting and, and offering and services everything. differently. You know Thank it you. is going to take an economic uh, impact on the community. Uh, every business is probably going to suffer in one way or another. There are measures that are being implemented right now as we talk. There's legislation that is trying to get laws passed and bills passed and relief passed. Right now Arizona Governor Ducey has applied for uh, from the SBA to be approved as a state. There's some states that are already approved to uh, for businesses to receive loans. Some of those states are Utah, Nevada, California. Mm. I don't have them exactly here on my list. I haven't been able to put all these notes together. I just got off the phone from them. But with that, Arizona has applied. And so as soon as we're able to get Arizona approved, that means that people can go to the SBA and request loans up as high as up to $2 million. And some of those applications will be processed in a two to three week period and they'll have funds uh, delivered you know shortly that helps them stay in business it's mm -hmm. hard to have to borrow money to stay in business but it is a way they're also talking about uh, paid leave administrations different things where people can be able to have uh, the unemployment kick in sooner all of those things are being 
implemented, there's plans putting in place, but right now we do not have anything in concrete to say this is exactly how it's going to be. But all of those things are, are happening and they're being talked about and working as fast as we can. I do want to, one of the things that I do want to share with people that's very important is, is the school is shared here on the nutrition programs. They deliver nearly a million meals per week for children in certain rural areas. Their flexibility to allow meal availability for students and Congress is considering additional bills to allow the USDA to feed more people during these times as well. And one point to understand is that our food supply has not changed. Uh, we have a very, very, the very best in the world as far as food supply to people. So there isn't a shortage of food, there isn't, it's just getting that food to the shelves again because people have had a tendency to go out and to buy what the, more than what they normally would. So you might see that there's lack of certain items, but as we return to just normal measures of our purchasing, you will see the, that catch up. And so it's just like, you know, you can't drive a truck across the United States in an hour. It takes, you know, weeks in some cases to get something that is in demand greater. So if we just uh, allow that to, to process again, we, we will have our food supply strong again because it hasn't been interrupted at all. Yes, you say some of those people may be laid off or they have in those measures already for people if they do get sick that they have emergency workers so that the food mm -hmm. supply works. So it's good. Very good. Any other question you may have? Uh, the other question um, was with regard to public transit and the Four Seasons and the White Mountain Connection. Has that been affected? And if not, do we expect it to? Right now, we have not closed our bus route. You know, as, uh, as people slow down their use of going from place to place, hopefully we don't get where the buses are, are as full as they used to be. Mm -hmm. So as long as we can keep order in the bus routes and not increase numbers, then you will see that we'll continue to keep our buses open. They're uh, cleaning the buses more. They're mm -hmm. trying to be more uh, proactive on, on keeping them clean and healthy for people as well. If the people who are riding them will take extra precaution to clean and stuff before they get on. And only make those trips for an absolute nece necessity mm -hmm. if you need to use Very the bus. Good. Good there. to know. Thank you. Those states so far I found my note was Washington, California, Maine, Connecticut, Nevada, Utah, Rhode Island, and D.C. And that's the emergency up to $2 million of an economic recovery loans. And, so and that was a very quick turnaround that you mentioned with, I think, two to four weeks. That is, for businesses, they can go to SBA, Small Business mm -hmm. Association, SBA.gov slash disaster and that's where they can start applying and do things as well so that's Excellent. just a, Thank one you. of the things that came out this morning uh, from my my call that's great information there Thank you. as far as school buildings that we have closed we have closed the library uh, library is still open however if you want to call online and and place an order or place your books we're able to fill that and then there'll be curbside service uh, that will bring it out mm -hmm. to you so mm -hmm. As we get more and more testing going on, we will see an increase of the cases. It's just going to happen nationwide, but that doesn't mean that this outbreak is getting worse. It just means that we haven't tested people before and we're getting more and more tests that we'll be able to start doing. But understand that if you test positive, then those people that are closest to you and around that you've made contact with will need to be quarantined. And so you're, as we socialize, and if one of us became tested positive, we're jeopardizing more people to be quarantined. So the fewer and less contact we have with others, then the better it's going to be to slow this down and possibly be able to eliminate it mm -hmm. the sooner than better as we Thank can. You. So just to interject one more thing, and this has to go back to meals. Um, Mike Alsop, I think, gave an update, the vice mayor in the council meeting about Meals on Wheels and the Senior Center meals. 
Um, people can still get those. They can still call. Um, those things uh, have not stopped. Can you? Just the senior center has been closed as far as for public gathering, mm -hmm. but yet every meal that we have cooked or prepared there will still be delivered. And so, uh, it also, if people want to sign up to get uh, food from from the Meals on Wheels, they can contact they can the, city the city, and we can okay. put them on the list for Thank meals. You. So we'll continue to to be implementing where meals can be, you know, taken out for people. Percy. Thank you. And purchase there. Uh, look to the school. Do you have any questions that you might have of the city or anything that we need to maybe help your life to be better? Um, no, I want to compliment the city and the, the your efforts that you're, you're making. This is uncharted territory for all of us, and uh, decisions aren't easy, and they're not easy to come by, but I, I applaud the effort that the city's making and the suggestions that you have. We're, we're in line with that as a school district and, and uh, unified with the city and moving forward, so thank you. Well, we appreciate your support. We really do. One of the things that... Uh, I think it's interesting just some of the media that they shared with us uh, that's you know like with anything there's always going to be that information that is not correct and they shared with us some stuff that's just happening out there that uh, is insufficient and so they just shared with us to rely upon the sites that you know that you can confirm the county website has a very good information I think the newspaper has mm -hmm. good information. The city of Sholo has good information. The state of Arizona has good information. So if you'll find yourself tuning in to those areas for the information, especially if you're gonna be making decisions. And I just wanna tell people that we're sorry. We feel with you. We don't want anybody to suffer any more than one person over the other during this time. But we have to be prepared to take care of the elderly. The elderly are the most people who are susceptible to this. We need to look out if we have neighbors who are older. We need to contact them by phone or however. We need to ask them, can I go to the store for you? Can I do something for you to keep them from being exposed? The least amount of exposure that we have to the elderly population the better that this will be because they will get sicker than the average person mm -hmm. and then anybody that's come in contact with them would have to be quarantined so when i say do what you can mm -hmm. for the elderly you, through phone conversations you don't even have to come in contact with them but you can just uh, you know cover your mouth mask those type of things but just leave it at the doorstep and leave you don't have to come in personal contact and i think that's one of the best ways to keep them healthy keep them aware of their needs but not to come in personal contact sure. if i could add to that mayor uh, one of the things that that has also happened in the community is summit Healthcare has changed some of their visitation policies and some of the protocols to kind of minimize that exposure to people who are already sick who may already be in the hospital and so that information is on their website and ours and so um, sometimes folks that already have some underlying illness, um, it's really important that we protect them as well because, as you said, they're, they're susceptible. I don't, uh, yeah, that's uh, even, Summit has been very active in that. That's also a directive uh, from Washington. As hard as it is that when you have a person, a patient in the hospital, mm -hmm. You want to be there for them, but in this case, we have to exercise the judgment that the people that are caring for them, we don't put them in harm's way by visiting. So it's almost, you know, asked to please, please understand and please uh, limit or, or stop your visits to people who may be in the hospital. Uh, it's very hard to do. They also are not going to be doing some of the tests and procedures on patients in the hospital just to keep open viable resources if they have to. So they'll only be doing what is absolutely necessary. But one of the things that we've learned from when we were little kids all the way up is hygiene. And if we will continue to exercise good hygiene, wash our hands until we're saying happy birthday two times and do all those things that we we know that we should be doing and you know 
you have a handkerchief with you and case you have to sneeze or cough, those things that you have to do. Uh, cover your mouth and when you do, throw, throw it away. But those are things that, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes we think that we need to, to put a mask or anything on. You shouldn't wear a mask unless you are sick, unless you have been uh, uh, ID because otherwise that mask traps in because most of the places where you're going to transmit this is through your nose and through your eyes. Mm -hmm. So the least that you come close in contact with somebody and the further you keep that distancing, we can still have interaction with people. We just have to be careful of how we do it. And so we appreciate you know the opportunity. I know this is a challenging time. I know that we will try to keep you updated and with the information as readily as possible. Don't hesitate to call. There's questions. Don't hesitate to call if you have a problem. But we will keep you informed as information comes. I mean, today my phone call gave us four pages of notes uh, of just things that are happening. I want you to know that one of the great things that's coming from this is for the first time in many years, we're seeing Washington work together and trying to come together with the plan. And I really feel if we'll stay together as an economy and as a, a community, and if we will work together to help one another, we can't be doing anything wrong when we're doing that. And so I just challenge everybody to remain calm. Uh, you know, one of our biggest social gatherings is at the stores. So whatever you can do to limit that and just pick up the basic needs that you have, uh, I think that will go a long ways as well. But just uh, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate what you do in our community, uh, reporting the news, getting the news out, as with other people who report the news and, and try to be there. Our schools uh, you know, are so precious to us and the children and things are happening. And, and I know that our county resources are doing everything they can to be there and to be prepared for us. This is unprecedented as the world mm -hmm. or in our country. And so a lot of people are saying, why haven't you done anything? Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? I mean, that isn't uh, a fair question. It's, I, my question would be back. Why? What? What do you? What can we do? We're trying to organize. We're trying to get resources. We're trying to do everything we can. But it's very difficult to stop something that's invisible. It's very difficult to say, "Here's where we got to go. This is where we have to stop immediately." So, as we continue to use good hygiene, and we'll be able to. It's my hope and my prayer that we will be okay, and that we will get through this as a community. Let's not let our faith yield. Keep strong. Remember, pray, ask for guidance, and as we do that, we will continue to be blessed as a community in the White Mountains. Thank you so much Thank for you. being with us today. Thank you very much. We can't shake or bump, but we can <laughs> high five and, and whatever that way. But And I appreciate uh, City Show 56 for having us today on this update. Again, citizens, if you have any questions, give us a call here at the city, and we want you to be safe. And Especially if we get a little snow tonight, uh, you know, be prepared for that a little bit. But, you know, make a snowman, build something else, uh, just have family fun. And there's a lot that we can learn. There's a lot that we can gather around and take that family time because that's what's important. That's what's important for each of our lives. Get to know your, your son or your daughter a little bit better. And I'm going to share just a real kind of comical, maybe, you know, uh, a little primary kid's prayer. Sometimes we, we forget what's important to them. But the story of the little primary child that started uh, saying the prayer and the primary teacher was listening or the Sunday school teacher was listening to him. And she went through and started saying the things that she was thankful for. And then she said, I'm thankful for the letter A. And said why? And the letter B and the letter C. And she got clear up to Z. And the teacher didn't know if they should interrupt her or not. And then pretty soon she got into, I'm thankful for the number one and the number two and the number three. And she says, oh, I don't know what to do. But she just kept quiet. And pretty soon she said, and I'm thankful for the number seven because she was seven years old. And then she says, and I'm thankful for my teacher because she's the only one that's let me finish my prayer. <laughs> and so sometimes it can seem long and sometimes it can seem challenging. But if we endure and we're faithful in doing that, we'll be blessed if we do the things that we can to help others. Thank you and may God bless the city of Sholo and may God continue to bless the United States and our president of this United States. Thank you. Thank you.